Okay, so I want to turn now to the ethics of war. And, you know, two reasons for this. One, I think it's just an important and interesting topic in and of itself. But I think also it will help us to understand Kantianism and utilitarianism better as we try to apply the theory to this issue. All right. So the first thing to note, just as an introduction here, is that there are two parts to the ethics of war. You'll often hear discussion of quote-unquote just war theory. It's a little confusing because there's just so many versions of just war theory. But this is a tradition that grew up in the Middle Ages. It really influenced the modern Geneva Conventions, which we will talk about. And just war theory broke down the ethics of war into two sets of questions. And I'm going to approach this the same way. You might notice if you're looking at your screen some Latin jargon here. I'm not going to use the Latin jargon. But I do think this approach of breaking it into two sets of questions is a useful way to think about the issue. And so there, the two sets of questions are, when is it acceptable to go to war? You might say, under what conditions... Is it justifiable to use military force? Um, something like that. But the basic idea is, when is it acceptable to go to war with another nation or use military force in some way against another nation or group? Just war theory, you know, like I said, this grew up in the Middle Ages. Um, you know, there's Latin jargon for this because, you know, in the Middle Ages, educated people wrote in Latin. Thank God we don't have to learn Latin to be educated anymore. And so, but the jargon for this was just ad bellum. I'm not going to use this jargon a lot. I mean, but if you ever see this somewhere else, just know that it's getting at this particular question. When is it acceptable to go to war? Under what conditions? Or more generally, when can we use military force? When is that morally acceptable? Two, what is it acceptable to do in war? What is morally okay to do in a war, in fighting a war? You know, and notice these are two different questions. You know, this two is about what soldiers on the ground can do or what military planners can order them to do. And it comes apart from question one. You know, look, we'll talk a lot about this. I think that if there's, you know, unless you are a hardcore pacifist and say that, you know, force war is never acceptable, I think the American and British side of World War II, both against the Germans and the Japanese, is a just war. It was acceptable to go to war with them, and I'd go further and say it's probably morally required. But even so, even if it is justifiable to go to war in these conditions, American or British soldiers or military planners could do something wrong, even though going to war is the morally right thing to do, right? If an American soldier just started shooting German civilians, old men, women, and children, he has done something wrong, even though he is on the just side of the war. You know, and notice who these questions are addressed to. When is it acceptable to go to war is much more addressed to the leaders. I mean, and also in a democracy like ours addressed to us, we should think about this when our leaders are thinking of going to war. But the second question, I mean, this is addressed to us as citizens and to our leaders. You know, if our country, even if the war is morally acceptable, if we're doing something wrong, we should press our leaders to stop doing it. But this is very much targeted, focused on soldiers on the ground. And one thing I want you guys to notice, we might not blame a soldier for going into a war that we think is unjust. You know, think about German soldiers who are drafted and you either get, you go into the war or you're hanged, right? We might not blame a German soldier in World War II for going into the war 
not just that you know he'd be killed if he doesn't, but he's subject to all this propaganda. His leaders are telling him to do this. So we might not blame him for fighting in an unjust war, but we would very much blame him for committing war crimes in that war if he took part in killing civilians, right? Which many of the members of the Wehrmacht did, right? You know, people were hanged at Nuremberg. Some of the Nazi leaders were hanged for violating number one, for declaring war in a case where it wasn't acceptable. But at both Nuremberg and the Tokyo trials, German soldiers and Japanese soldiers were sentenced to death or prison, not because they took part in the war, but because they did things in fighting the war that we think are clearly wrong. So two, these come apart because soldiers on the ground, we might not blame them. In fact, the traditional just war theory does not necessarily blame them for taking part in an unjust war though we very much blame leaders for declaring an unjust war. But even soldiers on the ground are required to not fight the war in ways that violate the rules of war. There's, there's been some argument about whether we want to keep this distinction. Um, a lot of people want to break it down. I'm not super impressed by these arguments, so I won't get waste your time getting into them. But... We will talk about both of these. Now, I'm going to start with two, though. Even though these are one and two, I think two is actually a good place to start. We will start talking about the accepted rules of war, things you can blame both soldiers and the leaders for violating. I'm going to start by presenting the accepted rules of war presented in the Geneva Conventions, and then we will start talking about what the different moral theories say about these rules. How Do the moral theories support these rules? How do you make sense of and support this particular set of rules about what you can do in war? Then we will move and talk about, you know, Anscombe, who we're going to read first, is very, very interested in two. She doesn't really think much about one. She's discussing the Allies in World War II, and she grants, as I think any sane person would, that the Allies had a good reason to go to war. But she thinks some of the particular things the Allies did violate number two. We'll focus on that, what those are. Before that, though, I want to get the rules for number two on the ground. After we read Anscombe and talk about that a bit, we will move and talk. We will read this philosopher Thomas Nagel. He talks about both of these. And he does not think utilitarianism is a good approach for making sense of either of these. We'll see why. But first, let's talk about Anscombe just to get... Well, first, let's talk about the rules of war. Then we'll talk about Anscombe to get into this. Then we'll move more deeply on, you know, whether or not a utilitarian theory is a good way to make sense of war. And if not what a Kantian theory might be able to say about the ethics of war.